Have you ever looked at a building and thought, wow, that's amazing. This week we are going to look at some beautiful buildings. I will often use the word architecture. Architecture is the art of designing buildings. Beautiful architecture can be just as inspiring and delightful to look at as our natural surroundings. Beautiful buildings are important to people because they help them fit into a kind of harmony with their environment. Buildings serve many purposes, from homes, churches, office buildings, schools, and many other types of buildings. Let's look at the buildings in this beautiful small town in Iceland. Notice the bright colors on the buildings and how they fit in with the grassy hills and the overall landscape. How do the beautiful colors of this town make you feel? What do you find most beautiful about the pyramids in Egypt? The shape, their massive size, or do you find them amazing because of the stories you've heard about them? The Taj Mahal in India is thought to be one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. The brilliant white color stands out against the sky. Notice the arched doorways, the domes on top of the structure, and notice it's symmetrical, it's the same on both sides, which adds to this building's great beauty. This is the Parthenon, built long ago in the times of ancient Greece. Notice its tall columns. If we look at the White House, where the President of the United States lives, we can see along the front, it has similar columns. I think that sometimes architects or artists who design buildings use ideas from buildings from long ago for newer buildings. This is the Louvre, a famous art museum in Paris, France. What ancient structure inspired this artist to make a glass entrance that looks like this? What kind of buildings inspire you? Are you inspired by the shapes of buildings, the colors of buildings? Are you wanting to design a specific kind of building? Like a house, a church, or an office building? Or do you want to design a whole city? Those are some things to think about as you begin to make your art. Today I have some helpful tips for you, whether you're getting started in the drawing studio, the collage studio, the painting studio, or the sculpture studio. Where do I begin on my drawing of a house? Usually what I like to do is I draw the line for the ground. This might be my horizon line. Then I will make the basic shape or shapes of the house. I'm going to make a simple rectangle for mine. I could make a variety of rooftops. Maybe I want to use two triangles and then connect them in the middle. Or maybe I just want a pointed rooftop. I'm going to make a trapezoid. I draw a slanted line up, up, and then a flat top. Trapezoid's just like a triangle with the top cut off. My house is two levels or two stories, so I drew a line there so that I know where to place my door frame. And now I'm going to place my windows. Easy to go across, across, connecting those so they're sort of even. Then I'll draw my door in. Sometimes it helps to have a reference paper where I can look at different types of windows, different types of doors. I think I'll divide mine up, not quite like this one, and maybe do a door similar to that. So I begin. You decide what kind of windows you want and what kind of door you want. I'm going to begin adding the stairs. I'll start by drawing rectangles under the door and they're going to each one get a little bit longer than the other one until I have enough stairs. I'll make railings by drawing two diagonal lines and then 
I will make vertical lines connecting to each step for my railing and maybe add a little extra something to that railing to make it fit. My home still looks very plain, so I'm going to add in some shutters on each side of the windows. Like rectangles with the little lines in them. What is my house made of? When you're designing a building, you need to think about that and be able to show that in your drawing or your painting or collage. Um, so in my drawing, I'm drawing in a tiled roof. I drew some bricks on my chimney and I'm making some stones at the bottom of my house on the foundation. My house is wood frame, so I'm gonna draw, skip draw, to make the wood on the front of the house. And I wanna add in some columns to make for a grand entrance. Remember that the environment your building is in is important as well. So I'm going to add a lot of detail to my background so my house becomes a home. You approach making a collage pretty much the same way as you do drawing. First to decide what kind of building you want to make. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to make a house. Um, and I cut out the large shapes first and just lay them on the paper. I made a triangle by taking a square and dividing it in half diagonally. I got a nice rooftop shape. I'm going to lay down a rectangle here and decide I want the slant going the same direction as my top roof slant cut that out and then put that back. Okay, here's my door and I have rectangles cut, um, one longer than the other for my stairs. And then I'm going to draw my line dividing my floors and it's time to make my windows. I'll stack them on top of one another so that when I cut them out, they're all the same size. I'm going to use Sharpie and crayons to finish off my collage. Okay, I'm going to fold my paper in half, fold the bottom up a little bit, and then I'll close it again. I want to make sure that both of my pieces match each other, that they're not different sizes. That'll be important in fitting my walls together to make whatever kind of building I'm making. Once again, just for to make it easy, I'm doing a house. But remember, this is about beautiful buildings, so while homes are beautiful, there's also a lot of other kinds of buildings. Can you believe that this art teacher doesn't have any liquid Elmer's glue in her house? Well, believe it. So that's why I'm using a glue stick. It works, but I think that the regular Elmer's glue bottle is much stronger. This doesn't take as long to dry though, which is an advantage. However, I like my projects to stay together better. I like to use tabs that are the same color as my building so they don't show and sometimes I put them on the inside but it's a lot easier to put them on the outside of the project and since I'm using tabs that are the same color as my paper of my building it doesn't matter they don't really show so I put glue on the inside of these little folded tabs and then I just pinch them on to the open edges and I usually use two per side. If you use liquid glue you'll have to hold them a little bit longer. This is where I like this glue stick. 
dries very fast. Okay, so now I have my four walls. I have them tapped together on the side. Now I'm ready to add a roof. If you add a flat roof, you are able to make another set of walls on top and make your building taller. What I do is I fold the edges over so I have some built-in taps. If I keep building up, I could build a tall apartment building or even a skyscraper this way. If I want to make a regular roof for a house, I can just fold my paper in half and then I can make some taps and instead of putting glue on the inside of the folded part, I put it on the outside. So I'll stick them on like that, facing out, and then I can just pinch my roof right on top. See how nice that looks? When I make my doors and windows, I always draw my details on first with Sharpie before I glue them down. Otherwise, it's too hard to draw them once they're attached to my building. If you find architecture beautiful, think about what kind of building you want to make today. Have fun!